Okay, guys, so uh, we're looking today at earth fault loop impedance, and what we're going to look at is the automatic disconnection of supply. We're going to talk about the earth fault loop impedance path, and we're also going to look at how we can determine the disconnection time of a particular protective device. So here on the screen uh, in front of us is a typical circuit, uh, distribution circuit. Um, I have along here, this is our number seven, so I'm hoping you can identify what the parts are. But number seven is our substation winding, so this is our supply. Uh, along our line, number one is the consumer's fuse, number two will be the fuse in the uh, final circuit uh, of the distribution board. Three is our live cable, our line, so our known as our R1, so that's what our... Um, this is the live conductor of our final circuit would be uh, obviously load so that's what we're plugged into four is the return neutral uh, which is again known as a live conductor six that's a bolted link uh, five this is the uh, earth so this is our our two our circuit protected conductor to this point our bolted link again this would be our earthing conductor and then this would be our supplier's earth uh, can you remember uh, to identify the parts? So what I've done there is here is I have uh, obviously got the parts here. So let's just put a ring around there and move these over so we can see what these parts are. Like so. And the type of circuit or type of earth arrangement, should I say, is a TNS Terra Neutral Separate. So the separate earth runs along here. Uh, into which, which symbolise in a metallic case. So this could be a metallic exposed conductive part, it could be a case of a machine, an electric cooker, an electric motor, some conduit, uh, some discharge lighting or metallic lighting. Um, it requires an earth, it's relying on an earth, an exposed earth conductive part as a means of protection against electric shock uh, or fault protection, which is known as in the wiring regulations. So what we've done now is we've drawn the circuit using resistors to identify the various uh, resistances and impedances throughout the loop. So uh, the neutral is avoided now because obviously during a phase earth or a line earth fault, you wouldn't, the neutral really wouldn't come into play. So just from the left to right, this is our supply transformer in our sub. So we've got a little bit of reactance in there, X, hence Y. Uh, we have a impedance Z, while well, we're dealing with the impedance, a uh, combination uh, of resistance and reactance of the transformer. Uh, ZE is the supplier's impedance um, of their line. So that kind of starts pretty much as it comes, starts and stops as it enters the building, if you say. So this is from our intake, our R1 conductor from our distribution board into our load. And here we have a nice little earth fault you can see there there's a breach on the live casing uh, and the earth current the fault current now to keep that obviously from remaining live we want to send the fault current down the earth so r2 and back to the supply and that is our complete circuit you can see where the arrows are flowing around here and this is why it's imperative that uh Electrical testing is done, is done to ensure that we have R1 and R2, uh, our continuity testing and ZE, because without this path, you would pretty much um, have a big problem on your hands. There would be no fault current and that live part would remain live. So let's look then further down here. You can see there that ZS is the total earth flow of impedance. ZE, well, that will be our electricity board. Uh, that's where we can get that from by measurement. R1, R2, that's our R1, R2 reading, so that's our final circuit of our line and our earth. So the earth of impedance is ZE plus R1, R2. Okay, and I've put a little note down there, uh, just so what H1 stands for. Okay, so this is the actual fault path current where we would flow. Uh, and obviously what I haven't drawn in here is a fuse. So the idea here is if I put a, draw a fuse in there like so, is that we want the current to be of a magnitude which is great enough to cause this fuse to rupture. 
the bigger the current that flows in that, uh, during the fault, then the quicker the disconnection time of that protective device. There are other problems as well, though, uh, which come to it. So, so uh, okay, so which we'll look at that in a second.